Hey everybody, it's Eric and I'm coming to you today with my top reads of 2021. Now I normally read mostly fiction, but as I was looking through the list of what I read this past year, turns out my top three hits were all from nonfiction. so let me tell you about them. First I've got All the Colors Came Out. This is a great book by Kate Fagan. She's a writer for Sports Illustrated and has written and worked for ESPN in the past. This book's about her father who was diagnosed with ALS and she actually stepped away from her professional pursuits to take care of her father. It's a really beautiful story about family and it'll really pull on your heartstrings. So I definitely think you should check it out. Next up, we have something a little darker. For my true crime fans, American Predator. This book is about the scariest serial killer you've never heard of. This guy, Israel Keys, he didn't fit any of the profile markers for a serial killer and eluded capture for decades. It's a really fascinating read. Definitely don't read it at night, though. It is also on Libby as well as being in our stack, so I definitely think if you like true crime, this is like the cream of the crop right here for you. And coming in at number three, we got my guy Roger Bennett, famous podcaster. He's on Men in Blazers. This is about his childhood and adolescence in Liverpool, England, and how he always aspired to come to America and eventually did come over and get his citizenship. It's really fun, heartwarming, and it'll make you laugh. You should definitely check it out. My name is Alexa. I'm a circulation assistant here at the Bourbonnet Public Library, and I'm here to talk about a few of my favorite reads from 2021. First, we have A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers. This is a solar punk novella, so science fiction and a book that's shorter than a novel about a world where people have separated from robots and AI. The robots in this world became self-aware and retreated into the wilderness. So since then, people have been living on their own without that kind of technology. The robots have been not heard of since then. So the world is pretty different from the way our world looks. Uh, our protagonist is a monk named Dex. They are a tea monk who serves tea to people who just need their problems listened to. And Dex is really good at their job, but they feel like something is missing in their life. So they retreat out into the wilderness, and lo and behold, they meet the first robot to contact humanity in a couple of centuries. I liked this book because it's really contemplative and philosophical. There's not a lot of conflict in the story, except for Dex's own personal journey of trying to find what fulfills them. I really liked that the setting was evocative and green, and it kind of felt like a Studio Ghibli movie to me, if you like My Neighbor Totoro or Kiki's Delivery Service. Um, solar punk is a genre where a lot of humanity's problems from today have been overcome, like sustainability or pollution, climate change. So the world is pretty positive, almost like a utopia, but the problems that the people are facing in the story feel really grounded and true. So that was one of the reasons I really loved this book. You can check this out here at the Bourbonnet Public Library, or it's also available on Libby as an audiobook if that's more your jam. Second on the list, we have A Memory Called Empire and A Desolation Called Peace by Arcady Martin. These are a two-book space opera series, science fiction, um, interstellar travel, giant space empire. It follows the journey of Mahit Desmar, a ambassador from the small but fiercely independent Whistle Station. She travels to the capital of the Texcalanli Empire and she has to figure out what happened to her predecessor, who was mysteriously found dead, maybe murdered, all the while protecting her own secrets, which is that the people of Lissell Station have technological implants that let them hear the consciousness of their predecessor. Uh, the story has everything you can want from space opera. There's a lot of political drama, the threat of space war. It's pretty cool in that regard. But what I really liked the most about it was the conversation about imperialism, um, colonialism, and identity. Mahit shows up in this world and is treated like a barbarian by many of the people she meets. They don't really understand that she is a person the way that they are. But at the same time, the culture of Texcalan is beautiful and seductive to her. It is a culture that loves poetry and art and fancy manners and things like that. So she feels herself drawn in, but at the same time, this world poses a risk to her. I liked this book for that reason, as well as the fact that she has interesting relationships with the people that she meets. It's hard to 
have an equitable relationship with someone who doesn't necessarily see you as a person, but her journey to figuring it out is really cool. Um, these books can be requested through our other libraries in the system if you want to read them, or A Memory Called Empire is available on Libby. And last we have The Anthropocene Reviewed by John Green. This is a book of personal essays that evolved from a podcast by Green of the same name. In his podcast and in this book, he reviews different aspects of our world on a five-star scale, which is kind of a funny premise when you think about it, but it's a pretty serious book. It's titled The Anthropocene Reviewed because the Anthropocene is the geologic lit age that we're living in right now, which is marked by the fact that humans have a lot of impact on our environment, which wasn't necessarily true in the past. So Green takes things from our world like sunsets or Diet Dr. Pepper and reviews them on a five-star scale in these essays that are woven with stories from his own life and his own observations. I really loved this book because the way that Green pays attention to the world is inspiring to me. He's really generous and compassionate, even about terrible things in this world. For example, he exa for example, he reviews a uh, plague, which plague is a terrible thing, but he wrote this book in part during the COVID-19 pandemic, and that comes through too. The different essays are ordered throughout his life in a way, so you get a little bit of a look at how he is as a person, which if you're a fan of John Green, the way I am, that's pretty cool. Uh, in the vein of this podcast and of the book, I rate it five stars. You can get the Anthrop Anthropocene reviewed here on Libby or on Access 360. Hi, I'm Katie. I'm the Marketing and Outreach Coordinator at the Bourbonnet Public Library, and I wanted to share a couple of my favorite reads of this year with you. So first off, I have The Love Hypothesis by Allie Hazelwood. Um, this one was really hyped up there. It was in Book of the Month. I wasn't sure I was going to like it because science is not my fave. And I absolutely loved this book. The uh, fake dating trope is in here and it was adorable. There were moments I just had to stop because it was so cute. So I definitely recommend reading this one. Um, it can be picked up here in the library for checkout or you can place a hold on Libby or Access 360. So another one of my favorite reads this year was definitely this trilogy. Didn't want to include all of them because I thought that was cheating, but definitely read The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin. There's not a lot I can tell you about this besides that it's fantasy. It's devastating in a good way. Um, and it's just one of the most like brilliant works of fantasy that I've read in a long time. I think about it at least once a week. Um, everyone deserves to read this, but it is kind of traumatizing. So if you don't like things that are sad or end of the world stories, maybe avoid this one, but, but also read it. Um, yeah, it can be found on Hoopla, Access 360, and Libby. I would highly suggest that everyone read this book. If you liked late 60s, early 70s rock music, um, bands like Fleetwood Mac, definitely give this a read or a listen. It's about Daisy Jones and the band The Six and making music during that time period by Taylor Jenkins Reid. All of her books are amazing. I had not read any of them until this year, and now I've read three, and they could all be on my favorites list. Uh, I would highly recommend listening to this one because it's read by a cast of characters, so you get all those different voices, and it's kind of like listening to just like a really great podcast. It's just a really well-crafted story. So check this out on Hoopla, Livy, or Access360.